Hello everyone, my name is Pixorifs, and welcome back to the Minecraft Survival Guide. I hope you're all having a good day. Yes, we ended up escaping the nether in the end. Today we're back in the overworld, and we're going to stay here, and I think we're going to finally work on an automatic farm for honey and honeycomb, because I mentioned that previously, we packed away all of the bees into a chest, and since then, the copper on this roof has almost fully aged. We've got a couple of sections up there that still need to finish aging, but I'm also lacking some honeycomb to wax the remaining copper slabs in this section of the roof. And I really want to get that tidied away because I keep looking at it and thinking, yeah, I need to go up there and strip the age off of those copper blocks. But instead, we're going to set up an automatic farm for honeycomb so that we only have to do that once and then never do it again. In the process, we're also going to set up an automatic farm for honey because honey is good to have in large quantities. We're going to do some really cool stuff with that later and we may as well start farming it now. So here in the copper and gold chest, I've actually stashed all of the bee nests that we had from that video and we've probably got a couple couple of bees in each of these. So I'll set up a really quick and very, very simple to make honeycomb farm. And if we need to, we can breed some bees that will go into this one. Now I do need a couple of redstone components. We're going to need four dispensers, so I'll have to make a couple more of those. We'll need some hopper minecarts for the collection mechanism. Only a tiny amount of redstone, but we will also need some observers. So let's make sure we've got everything we need before we start this project. Oh, I've also just realized that I still have two ancient debris in my inventory, thanks to the bastion raid from the other day. And from our ancient debris episode we had two left over with two netherite scrap even three you can't do a whole lot but with four we can make another netherite ingots so we might as well grab a couple of gold ingots from nearby and let's turn one more tool into its netherite counterpart and the tool we're going to convert is going to be dun -da -da -da, the hoe <laughs> mainly because of this <laughs> there we go Weren't expecting that, were you? So a diamond hoe used to be one of the most laughable concepts in the game because it didn't really have many uses other than creating farmland. However, of course, netherite hoes aren't all that much of a ridiculous prospect because you can use hoes for a variety of things, from clearing up leaves to harvesting nether wart blocks from the crimson trees in the nether to clearing up sponges that we've dried out. The hoe is the tool for all kinds of stuff like that. And if worst comes to worst, if you get a fortune hoe, you can, of course, use it to fortune some crops over here in the farmland. So that's worth while as well. Anyway, back to what we were doing. We're going to set up a honeycomb farm, and I think we're probably going to do it over here. I feel like the fisherman's cottage over here needs company. So over here, we're going to make some kind of beekeeper's cottage once we've got the farms set up. So we'll start by taking out these birch trees, leveling out the ground around here, and dealing with any weird spots of water that have just kind of been carved into the landscape when it generated. We're going to grab four yellow dye in the form of two sunflowers so that we can dye all of this glass yellow, because I think that will go quite well with the bee aesthetic. Just crafted a netherite hoe and I'm punching all of these leaves by hand. I don't like using unenchanted tools though, it just feels weird to me now. Alright, barring the disappearance of one leaf block, we're pretty much set up here. So the first thing we're going to do is dig a hole in the ground and I'll explain exactly how this whole setup is going to work. So as usual, one of the first things we're going to do is set up our collection mechanism. So we're going to dig this hole down one more block, actually. We're going to have a double chest probably here facing this way, and that's going to collect up all of the honeycomb as it's generated. We'll need some hoppers running into this, and at the end of that, we're going to have a hopper minecart on a rail right here. The reason we need this is that when the hive or bee nest is sheared, it's going to spit out the honeycomb in a random direction, but the hopper minecart will actually collect it faster than that, because hopper minecarts are pretty fast at collecting items. So as soon as the honeycomb is generated, it's going to be sucked through the hopper minecart into these hoppers and out into the output chest before that random direction can even be applied. So we're going to put the nest directly over the top of this hopper minecart, but we're not going to place that yet because all the bees are going to escape in the meantime. Instead, we're going to set up the mechanism around the outside that's going to detect and automatically shear the hive as it produces honeycomb. We'll need a dispenser right here. We'll need a block on top of that, and we'll need an observer observer facing downwards towards the spot where the hive is going to be, like so. You don't have to jump and place it, that's just me being a little bit awkward. On top of the block and the observer, we're going to have two pieces of redstone dust like that, and then once we place the hive in here, in theory, that is complete. It's a very, very simple circuit, because what the observer is doing is detecting when the hive or nest increases in honey level. Honey level is a kind of behind the scenes value which increases every time a bee leaves a hive after having worked inside. Once they come back with pollen, they increase the honey level when they exit the hive next time. We'll see that in action a little bit later, but first of course we have to make sure that there is a flower or something for them to work on right here. And that is why we've got two hoppers leading into this chest instead of just one, because we need to have something 
something centrally here. In fact, we're actually going to turn this whole storage mechanism around and put the chest right here because I have a feeling we're probably going to build an identical setup opposite this. So we'll put the chest there, we'll have the hopper running out into it there, and then on this opposite side, we can have another hopper with another hopper minecart running into the same chest. I'm going to use moss here and a poppy because we've got plenty of those right now. I'm going to build exactly the same setup on the opposite side. So we're going to have a hopper minecart on top of there, we're going to break that rail, we'll have a dispenser facing into there. I might as well use the rest of my honeycomb for honeycomb blocks since we're going to be getting a lot more of it in a second. We'll have our observer facing downwards like so, two redstone dust on the top, and that's complete as well. And now we're going to make sure that we encase this in glass because otherwise the bees are going to be able to escape and we don't want that. We're even going to set up another module of this farm right here so that all of it can be fed into that same output chest because all we need to do that is a few extra hoppers and that's going to effectively double the honeycomb output of this farm. And it's modular so you can basically make as many of these as you like. Two more redstone dust on each of those, moss in the middle with a poppy on top and we are more or less done here. We'll surround this part in glass, we'll also have a glass pillar up through the middle to make sure that they can't escape from outside either of these and we'll grab some shears to go in each of the dispensers. And the way this is going to work is incredibly similar to the way the sheep farm works, where the bees activity is going to be detected and the dispenser is going to fire shears, which will automatically shear the honeycomb from the hives when they produce it. As the honey level increases in the hive, the observers will detect it. But once again, no durability is going to be lost on the shears if they can't extract any honeycomb. We can actually demonstrate this by putting any block in front of these dispensers now, which I'm going to do just so I make sure that I don't end up releasing any bees in the process. But the sun is going down and bees shouldn't leave the hive during the night, so hopefully we can get all of this taken care of swiftly now. As you heard, all of those dispensers ticked when we placed blocks in front of them, but there's no durability damage to the shears, so this looks like we are onto a winner. I'm going to dig down one block, we're going to place a bee nest in this spot here, and that's perfect. That's facing directly in there and the bees have not left the nest. Of course, that could mean that there aren't any bees in there, but we can now hear them working. So that's a very good sign. We'll do the same right here, making sure that we look at the top right hand corner of this dispenser so that we can place the nest facing inwards. One more nest here and one more here. Yes, there we go. Okay, all of the bees should now be in place. And when we go to sleep and wake up again, we should find that there are a bunch of bees buzzing around inside these spaces. And there they are, what a wonderful bunch. We cannot guarantee for certain that there are as many bees as there possibly could be in this space though. But as you saw right there, one of the bees re-entered the nest. We can actually look at the honey level on the targeted block data there on the right hand side of our debug screen. The honey level is already at two, meaning that two bees have exited the hive after having worked around a flower. And once again, we can hear the mechanism popping off here, along with some creepers that are interested in popping off over by my new farm, no thank you. But each time the bees exit the nest, there you go, you will see the redstone mechanism firing, which means that it's activating the dispenser and trying to shear each of these nests. When it is eventually successful in doing that, you'll briefly see the front of the hive flash with honey, but then the dispenser will fire, the shears will shear the honeycomb, and the honeycomb should end up being transported by the hoppers and hopper minecarts into our collection chest. Like the sheep farm, this farm can run indefinitely and basically just depends on the lifespan of the shears that we've placed in the dispensers. We could also, if we wanted to, rig up hoppers, maybe with barrels on top of them, to feed in more sets of shears over time. And this can hold nine sets of shears, this hopper could hold five, and a barrel or a chest on top could hold another 27. So it's easy to stack this farm for it to last pretty much a lifetime. And as you just heard, we actually had a couple of successful shears there, which means we now have three honeycomb waiting for us in the chest. If we were harvesting this manually, you would need a campfire underneath the hive or the nest in order to not anger the bees. But considering that this is all being done by redstone, the bees don't know who to get angry at, and so the anger mechanic never kicks in. What we end up with as a result is a bunch of bees that will happily produce honeycomb for the remainder of their days. And if you don't want to have them in captivity, if you're more sympathetic towards the bees and you don't want them boxed up in a glass space, you can of course set up this mechanism basically anywhere. As long as the bees are going to return to the same hive and pollinate it, then 
then they're going to produce honeycomb for you using this mechanism. This is just a simplified way of making sure that the bees don't wander too far away and get lost out there in the render distance, or that they make sure they can return to the hive in the most efficient amount of time. Now, as I mentioned, I'm not certain if we have the maximum number of bees per nest here. So to make sure this farm is working at its maximum efficiency, we want to make sure we have three bees in each of the nests. In order to breed the bees while they're in this area, we could swap out one of these blocks for a slab and we should be able to feed the bees flowers from inside this area. A half block here or something with a non-full hitbox is going to make sure that the bees don't end up escaping. So let's grab a couple of poppies, probably from the iron farm, and let's breed up the bees. There we go, while all the bees are out and working, we can right-click a couple of them, the ones that we can reach with the flower being in place and everything, and hopefully sooner or later, yes, a younger bee is born. And since it's quite small, the hitbox is actually small enough that it can sneak out from underneath this slab. So you might want to use a stair or something in there to decrease the chances of that happening. But this is actually not a problem, because as I mentioned before, even though this bee is trying to hover around the height of the flower, it can return to the nest here at night, and it can do so from the side faces of this block, but it will always exit out the front. It will do that earlier than nightfall if it's already managed to pollinate on one of the flowers in the surrounding area, but right now it seems a little fixated on the flowers that are in the farm or the ones that are in my hands. So maybe we could plant a flower here for it to pollinate from, that seems like a reasonable idea. And once it's done that, it's going to choose a hive to return to. And there we go, now we should be able to shut the remainder of the bees back in the farm and we should have the maximum number of bees in at least one of these hives. We'll do the same trick on the other side here as well with the slabs so that we can potentially breed up a couple of bees in this hive as well, and we can let out any of the juvenile bees that don't return to the nests at night because it's pretty obvious that those nests are already full. And in the morning, the farm has had a little bit more time to work and we have 12 more honeycomb waiting for us. Absolutely fantastic. So this farm is going to work for us for a very long time, and in the meantime, we can turn our attention to the complicated task of farming honey. For our honey farm, because I like the look of them, I decided to generate a few more natural hives. And so I've been farming a few more birch trees with flowers around them so that they generate the hive blocks themselves and breeding up a couple of bees just to make sure each of our hives can reach capacity. So now we should have four hives here and one in the chest. We're actually going to use one of these as a demonstration. But now I'm fairly certain that all of the hives have occupants because it's nighttime, so all of the bees should be at home. Those last two are going to buzz their way towards the hives, and we're going to leave this one out here, I think. This one is going to go and find another natural nest out there, or we could set down another hive for it, but as far as the hives that we need for our honey farm, we now have the four I'm going to use. So let's talk about how farming honey is a little different from farming honeycomb, because the difference is quite significant. The way we're going to actually harvest the honey is more or less the same by using a dispenser with glass bottles in. By activating the dispenser, we're going to use a glass bottle on this hive filled with honey, and for once, the honey is actually going to end up retracting back into the dispenser in kind of the same way that a water bucket is retracted. The difference now is that if we activated the dispenser each time the hive leveled up with honey, it's at honey level zero right now, but if, for example, a bee exited the hive and the observer over the top of this setup detected that and would end up firing the dispenser, the dispenser is just going to spit out either a glass bottle or eventually the honey bottle. Because that's just the way the dispensers work. The glass bottle doesn't work the same as shears and stay in the dispenser if it doesn't detect anything that it can do in front of it. It will just be spat out the same way that it would be from a dropper. So we can't use the same mechanism that's going to fire an observer every time the honey level in the hive changes because we're just going to end up with a bunch of empty glass bottles lying around. Instead, what we're going to use is a more sophisticated redstone component called a comparator. And comparators are a little bit more expensive to make than your average redstone component. We all need three redstone torches, some quartz, three stone across the bottom, three redstone torches in a triangular pattern like that, and one quartz will get you the recipe for a comparator. Comparators have a bunch of different functions when it comes to redstone circuitry, but one of the most important things they do is measure the contents of a container. If I put this comparator next to this chest here, because there are a few items sitting in the chest, the comparator is going to output a redstone signal, which is going to be pretty low right now. We can see that's power of one, and if we place redstone dust on the next block over, no power whatsoever. 
If I end up putting more items in this chest, filling it up to a greater capacity, the redstone signal output from the comparator is going to increase. In this case, it's increased by one, because even though we've got a ton of different items in here, not all of these stacks of items are filled up to maximum capacity. Put simply, the comparator measures the percentage of the container that is full. That is just one of the things comparators can do, and we'll get into other functions of comparators a little bit later. But one of the most important things for today's episode is that comparators can detect the honey level of a hive. This hive is now currently full of honey. If I put a comparator behind it, as you can see, it will actually detect the level of honey in the hive up to a maximum value of five. So this redstone dust right here has a power level of one. This redstone dust right out of the comparator has a power level of five, and that is detecting how full the hive is. So what we can do is use this to set up a redstone circuit that's going to detect when the hive is full and only activate a dispenser once it reaches honey level five, effectively guaranteeing that the hive only gets harvested with glass bottles once it reaches that level. We're going to put a dispenser facing downwards into the bee nest, and for now we'll put a hopper underneath it to to catch the honey. Another really important aspect of comparators is that they can read the contents of a container, whether it's a hive like this or a chest, through a solid block on the opposite side. So as you can see, the redstone signal is being activated because the comparator is detecting the level of this hive through this block next door. We're going to use that to double this redstone signal back around so it reaches this block here, which will power the dispenser. The dispenser is going to use a glass bottle to harvest the honey from the hive. And for a moment, that's going to retract the honey bottle into the dispenser. We're going to work on that aspect in a second. But first we have to think about where the redstone signal is going and the fact that if we want the redstone signal to travel upwards Any kind of diagonal created by redstone signal is going to be cut off if we place a solid block above it like that So we can transfer the signal into this block, but it won't go any further What we're going to do instead is place a glass block above here because glass being a transparent block can actually allow the redstone signal to flow through it. It also allows us to wrap the redstone signal around so it reaches up on top of the glass there. Then we can put one final solid block there. And once I've slept so that we can see this in action, we can place two more redstone dust here and here. And there we go, that activates the dispenser. The comparator loses signal because this hive is no longer full of honey. As we can see, the honey has been removed and it's been retracted into the dispenser by that glass bottle, which is now a bottle of honey. The bees have all just returned to the nest, so we'll wait around for a second and see what happens to the redstone signal as they leave the nest again and increase the honey level in the hive. There you go, all three bees just left the hive. And as you can see, that's made some changes to this comparator. It's already outputting a redstone signal strength of Three, which is wrapping all the way around to this piece of redstone on the top. Once the bees have worked two more times inside this hive, the honey level is going to increase to five. That's going to complete our circuit here and the dispenser is going to claim another honey bottle. The question is, how do we get those honey bottles from the dispenser into a hopper? The answer to that is actually pretty simple. We're going to fill up the dispenser with empty glass bottles, meaning that the honey bottles basically have nowhere to go but out of the dispenser. We're going to squeeze a few more honey bottles into here. Obviously, they will stack to 64, so we can put as many of those as we want to into the dispenser. And removing the hopper from the equation for a second, once the bees finish working in this hive, the honey bottle that spat out out by this dispenser is not going to be able to retract back into the dispenser and it's going to be spat out of the dispenser the same way that honeycomb is when it's sheared from the other hives. We should be ready for honey any second. Yes, there we go. And there is our honey bottle spat out at a pretty randomized direction, much like the honeycomb would be. The difference now is we can place a hopper underneath this whole setup. And since the honey bottle is going to end up dispensed into the region of this solid block, this hopper is going to be able to pull it out of that space because it's occupying a space above where the hopper is. So hopefully we should see the next honey bottle ending up inside this hopper. And if we wanted to, we could put a storage chest underneath this to contain all the honey bottles that the dispenser ejects. While the bees over there are working, let's check on our honeycomb farm and it's already well into its second stack of items. That's really good. I did end up cleaning up the roof of the fishing shack a little as well. So everything is ticking over here very nicely. 
There we go, we just saw it happen as there was a changing of the guard and one bee left as another bee emerged and now we should find, yes, a honey bottle is waiting for us in the chest. That worked perfectly. So all we would need to do in theory is to make sure that every slot of this dispenser had a continuous supply of glass bottles and the honey bottles would always end up inside this chest here. The other cool thing about this circuit is that we can build them effectively side by side. We could build another circuit directly next door to it with another dispenser and another hive and that would operate completely independently of this circuit here. The redstone dust would not power that circuit until the hive in front of it ended up with the right honey level because redstone dust doesn't power things in an additive way, it powers them in a sequential way. For now, since it is nighttime, we can silk touch this nest with all of the bees inside of it and we're going to set up a row of these circuits basically opposite where the honeycomb farm is so that they can be part of the same beekeeper's house. I think we'll just make a small honey farming module. We're just going to make four nests side by side and we can just make four redstone comparators for that to keep the overall material costs here down a little. So once again, we're gonna start by setting up an area for the output chests. And since we're gonna have four nests side by side, we can have those output into two sets of double chests because honey bottles only stack up to 16 so they can fill up a chest relatively quickly. We'll have hoppers from each side of the farm feeding into these chests and those are gonna be fed by two Two sets of hoppers underneath the hives themselves. Last of all we need a row of hoppers on top of that because the hives of course need to be level with some grass blocks with flowers on. Or moss blocks in this case. I decided to use moss across the board because I just like the fact that it wraps around with the colour on all sides. We could even put some moss inside of here to disguise the dirt area behind here. There we go, nice and filled in there. We need to put some flowers on top of these moss blocks, of course. I think I'm going to use oxide daisies for this. I don't know, they just look really nice. Anyway, four oxide daisies can go over there, and we're going to build up a layer of glass over the front of them so that we can see the bees working inside the farm, but the bees will be encased inside of here. Naturally, we want some solid blocks on either end of the farm as well, like so. So we're going to have some spruce logs coming up here, and I think we'll probably cap these off on either side like so with a honey block in between to kind of illustrate that this is the honey farm. Back on the redstone side of things, we of course need to make sure that our redstone circuitry is on a solid block other than dirt so that we know what we're doing with it. I think in this case, we're going to use dark oak planks since they look a little bit nicer than cobblestone. We need a solid block here for the comparators to read the hives through. We're going to have the comparators on a row behind that. Redstone dust on these two blocks going up one step and then we'll double back around with a little bit more of the yellow stained glass. That'll lead over onto two more solid blocks like so, and we need one more redstone dust to make sure all our dispensers are going to be wired up properly. And I thought witches were bad. It turns out we have a pillager captain right here as well, and this is the reason I don't have villagers anywhere near my base. Just gonna give him the piglin treatment, there we go, <laughs> and hopefully that hasn't just started to burn my house down. And naturally my parrot is now making noises like a pillager captain, which is hilarious. So one more redstone dust on top of there, the dispensers will go in like so. The most important part here, making sure sure that all of the dispensers are facing downwards. We'll put another row of dark oak planks over the top of this and the hives themselves are actually going to fill up this space making sure that the bees can't escape from the sides. On top of this we're going to have hoppers facing downwards into the dispensers so that we have a way of making sure they stay filled up with glass bottles or even filling the glass bottles in in the first place. And we can cover those with two double chests, which is going to split the glass bottles evenly, making sure that they end up in both of the hoppers each time. We can cover those up with some spruce trapdoors, which actually look quite nice with the rest of this wood decor. This is gonna be on the interior of a house after all, so it's gotta look like it's part of the furniture, so to speak. And with that in mind, I actually want to fill in these dirt blocks under here with something that's going to look similar to the hoppers, but not have the same functionality. So I'm actually gonna put a couple of cauldrons in there. These aren't gonna do anything for the farm itself, but I actually really like the line of that cauldron texture. I think that looks quite nice with the, the lip of the cauldron being there. Just a tiny detail, but sometimes those tiny details are important. Anyway, now is the time to move these bees into their new home, and the way we're going to do this is kind of similar to what we did in the honeycomb farm when we needed to breed bees. We're going to break out these glass blocks and just put a couple of slabs in here. That way when we place our bee nests, we're going to need to place one quite quickly at either end of the farm like so. The bees will fly out, but only the juvenile ones will be able to make it underneath these slabs, and right now they'll be too busy messing with the flowers. Of course, the one thing we haven't done yet, the one thing I should have done before we put the bees in, although it's not entirely essential, is 
to fill up all of the dispensers with glass bottles. And we'll need to make sure that all of the glass bottles fill up the spaces of the dispensers because the hoppers will fill up the dispensers from left to right, top to bottom. So we're going to need to spread some of those bottles around to make sure we don't run out of glass bottles in one space and have the honey bottles start to accumulate inside the dispenser itself. So that's looking pretty good across the board. We don't have a huge amount of glass bottles in here right now, so I'm going to have to take a trip to my villagers to make sure I can trade a little bit more glass. Now all of the bees are inside, we can replace those two glass blocks. And as we can see, these two hives here have already started to produce some honey, which means that they're already activating these blocks next to the dispensers in front of them. And the hives haven't been harvested yet because there weren't any glass bottles in there in the first place. There's a very simple fix for that. We just need to break these two pieces of redstone dust and replace them, which should reactivate those dispensers. And that will cause the farm to start working again. We should now have two honey bottles in this chest. Yes, we do. Perfect. And the honey bottles will start to roll in on this side as well once the hives are being harvested. We'll put in a few dark oak stairs for decoration and just to show that we can access these chests nice and easily. And that's looking pretty solid. We've got two honey bottles either side now, which means all four modules of this farm are working as intended. And I think it looks pretty good. I quite like this whole setup. The most important thing, of course, is the redstone. And hopefully that tutorial was easy enough for you folks to follow. Now you should have an idea of how to set up both a honeycomb farm and a honey farm to get the best out of your bees. And that is where we're going to wrap things up for this episode of the Minecraft Survival Guide. In between episodes, I'm going to work on an idea for this beekeeper's house, and we'll probably go and grab a bunch more glass from the villagers so that we can fill up the remainder of those dispensers. But for now, thank you so much for watching this episode. My name has been Pixel Riffs. Don't forget to leave a like on this video if you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you want to see more, and I'll see you folks soon. Take care. Bye for now.